Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. It is today. We're going to be talking about um, from Fierce Wireless, and this is from Linda Hartsty, May 24th of this year at 4.05 p.m. AT&T will activate 5G standalone core when devices are ready. The big apple there, the core. <laughs> In Denver, AT&T currently has 277 million points of presence, P-O-P, POPs. That's, that's what they call that. Ah, I've heard the word POPs before, but never like, never like that. Covered with its low band spectrum from early, its 850 megahertz spectrum, and it's planning to have 200 million POPs covered with its new C band spectrum on the end of next year. It uses millimeter wave spectrum on a more targeted basis at sports stadiums and other entertainment venues. But aside from spectrum, what is AT&T's roadmap to finish deploying 5G? Now, they spoke with Fierce Wireless today at the Wireless Infrastructure Association's Connect Conference. Gordon Mansfield, AT&T's Vice President of Mobility and Access Architecture, said, the company is still waiting to activate its 5G standalone core, and the delay mainly relates to the device ecosystem. From a, for a carrier such as T-Mobile, its deployment of an SA 5G core may have been a priority related to its spectrum. But Mansfield said that for AT&T, the standalone 5G core really isn't tied to any spectrum. It's about maturity of broader ecosystem. Specifically, he was referring to the device ecosystem of 5G phones and tablets. Apparently, the current devices on the market can handle the 5G network. But if they are constantly using a 5G standalone network, that may impact, impact battery life. Device manufacturers don't want to degrade the battery life, he said. They really care about the battery life. When you're on non-standalone, you're using LTE single-link protocols. For silicon, LTE is more efficient from a power draw perspective. He said original equipment manufacturers, OEM, prefer to stay on their older technology until the silicon and the phone can have the same power efficiency as existing phones. Mansfield said new silicon is being becoming available now to handle the power efficiency challenges. You'll start to see more SA capabilities deployed at more scale now as the device ecosystem starts to mature. Mansfield said there are three broadband factors that impact the environment, 5G environment. First, you have to have 5G radio environment, which, which they do, according to him. Then you have to have the device. Then you need the application to take advantage. When you think about all that, the ecosystem is starting to mature, including the devices. Although many power efficient silicon is coming and will be deployed in many new smartphones. Mansfield said the 5G capable phones that people have purchased the last couple of years still have a lot of runway. Future 5G phones with the improved power efficiency, which will run on AT&T standalone network, will make these people happy who use heavy applications on the devices, such as cloud gaming. The new the news phones will also support spectrum band combinations, which will free up existing bands used by older phones. As of May, AT&T Network supports 27 C band capable compatible smartphones. Mansfield said, "We have our standalone core in our network from a maturity perspective, but enabling it in devices is a question. As we feel confident devices are performing well, including battery management, we will begin to activate." Now it says here. Why does T-Mobile brag and has deployed an SA 5G core? Now, you T-Mobile fanatics out there, listen to this now, okay? Here we go. T-Mobile announced in 2020 that its SA version of 5G was available nationwide, initially using its 600 megahertz spectrum. Now, in late 2021, T-Mobile said it was working on voice over new radio so that its 9G network would be able to handle the voice calls as well as data. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. From his perspective, Mansfield said T-Mobile needed to quickly deploy its SG 5G core so this LTE coverage on its AWS or PCS spectrum wasn't very robust in rural areas. It, it deployed 5G SA on its 600 megahertz spectrum to expand rural coverage, and now it needs VONR that voice calls have decent quality. 
They anchored 5G SA. If they stayed on NSA, their coverage would be limited because they have to be on LTE. They moved to SA with more about coverage than anything else. They need to rapidly move to voice over NR. They have SA2 for data, but they need VONR if they're Achilles heel. Asked when AT&T plans, AT plans to do VONR, Mansfield said, I don't have a problem because I've already got rural coverage. He said, AT&T's timeline for VONR is sometime next year, the same as when the device ecosystem matures. Previously, Dave Bolin, research director at Dell Or Group, said that AT&T and Verizon may not have activated their 5G SA cores nationwide because they need bandwidth of the C-band spectrum they're deploying. Bolin said CSPs have three choices for offering 5G, dynamic spectrum sharing, non-standalone, and standalone 5G. 5G SA requires a new 5G core, and many CSPs, even the content, for the time to be being to stick with DSS and 5G. But Mansfield disagrees with that assessment. He says in AT&T's case, it is using DSS, but that technology will work with both its NSA core and its SA 5G core. He said the base station connects to both cores. And if the device is SA compatible, then it will connect to the SG, SA 5G core. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you enjoyed this. And we hope that you like it. We hope that you're going to have, you're going to enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And um, we'll see you soon on the next one. Take care. Bye.